Hello editors. I am Vortex and today I'm going to teach you guys how to create this sleek and modern card animation inside DaVinci Resolve. So let's dive in. Drag down a fusion composition on the timeline. Then head over to the fusion page. Drag down a background node. Connect it to the media out. Then select the background node and in the inspector menu, change the type to gradient. Now adjust these two points like this. To change the gradient colors, select this little triangle and change the color to dark gray. You can copy the color code if you want the exact same color. Then change the other one too. And we got the background. It's a little hard to see now, but it'll look great when it's done. Now let's create the card. Drag another background node and connect it to the input of the first background node. It'll automatically add a merge node. Also change its color to dark gray. Now select it and click on this rectangle shape to add a rectangle mask. Now change its width and height to get the desired shape. After that, increase the corner radius to get rounded corners. All right, let's make some space for another nodes. Select the background node and hit Shift plus Spacebar and Search Drop Shadow. Select it and click Add. Then in the Inspector menu, change the drop distance to 0 0.0236. By the way, you don't have to use the same values. I want you to play with these values by yourself and try out everything to see what fits your style. Change the blur value to 0 0.362. And we get this nice shadow for our card. Now, it's time to design the card. For that, drag down a text plus node and connect it after the drop shadow. And modify it in the inspector menu. Type one and change the size and font. Choose any font you like. I'm going with Satoshi Black. It really goes with the modern and sleek vibe of our animation. You can download it for free. All right, now let's add those rectangles. For that, take another text node and connect it to the tree. Now you might be wondering, how are we gonna type rectangles? Don't worry, just type three dollar signs and find a font that treats them as rectangles. Like this one right here. That's how easy it is. Now adjust its size and position. Okay, it's looking good. Also, if you're still having problems seeing the card because the background and the card almost has the same color, then just change one of the gradients color of the background to white. And now you can design it easily. All right, now let's add the main title. Again, drag down a text node. But before that, this one is too bright, so let's make the white color a little darker. Okay, now connect this text to the tree. And type editing. Again, it depends on the script, so you can type whatever fits. Change the position and also the font. I am going with Algerian, you are free to pick any. Now decrease its size and, and place it in the center. Then take another text node. Connect it to the tree. Type three underscores for aesthetics in your text. Also change the font to any script font. I am using Rage Italic. It's a default font in DaVinci. And again, change the size and position. Also change the color to light gray. All right, the car design is done. Now we need two more for the animation. And no one in their right mind would create two more cards from scratch. So do this. Select all the nodes except the background and the merge. Then right click on any node and select group. This will place all the nodes in one group. So basically this group is our card. Now select it and press F2 to rename it to card one. Then add a transform node. It will let us move the card however we want. And now, copy both of them by pressing Ctrl plus C and paste them here. Then connect the transform node to the merge. Do this one more time. Don't forget to rename them. Now, select the transform node, which is connected to card two, and drag the center X value to the left, holding your left mouse button. Then select the third card's transform and drag the X value to the right. Just make sure there is equal space between the cards. Now, double click on the second card group node and it'll open the group and reveal all the nodes that are inside this group. 
Now find the text which says 1 and change it to 2. We don't need to change this one. Then select this one and change the title and leave everything else as it is. Close the group by clicking this little cross button. Now customize the third card as well. And we have all three of our cards ready to animate. Change the background color back to dark gray. And this is looking pretty neat, right? Now let's animate the cards. Select the transform node of card one. Make sure you are at frame zero and add a keyframe to center X and Y values. Then go to frame 30 and add another keyframe. Then go back to the first keyframe by clicking this little arrow and decrease the Y value until the card is completely out of frame. Now, if you play it back, we have this basic slide animation and it looks pretty trash, not gonna lie. So let's smooth it. Select the transform node, open the spline editor, check transform, then click this icon to zoom to fit. Drag select both keyframes, then hit right click, ease, select out cubic, then close the spline tab. And now if we play it back, look how smooth it is. We need the same animation for other cards as well, but we don't want them to start at the same time. So do this, instead of adding keyframes at frame zero and 30. Add them at frame 10 and 40. This will leave us with 10 frames delay in our animations. The process is same, just make sure there is a 10 frames difference in all the animations. Do the same with third card. Add keyframes at frame 20 and 50. And do the rest like we did for the first one. And just like that, the card animation is done. And this is how it looks like. We will now move to the last part of the animation the mouse click animation. But before that, enable motion blur for all the transform nodes and crank up the quality and shutter angle to the max. And if you have a potato PC like I do, it'll make your playback laggy. To fix that, right click here and uncheck high quality and motion blur. It'll remove the motion blur from preview, but it'll be there in the final export. Now let's create the cursor animation. For that, you'll need a cursor PNG like the one I got here. You can get high quality PNG from Flat Icon and Freepik for free. Then drag it down and connect it to the merge. Before we animate it, we need to add some nodes to make this PNG blend into the scene because it looks really flat right now. So make some space for other nodes. So first we'll change its color. And here is a million dollar tip for you guys. If you wanna change the color of any PNG. Do this. Disconnect it from a node tree and drag down a background node below it. Then take the output of your PNG and connect it to the blue input of the background node and then the background to the merge. As you can see, our PNG changed in a black color because our background is black and the PNG is working as a mask. All right, now select the background node and change the type to gradient and adjust the points like this. Select the background node again and hit shift plus spacebar and search edge detect. Click add, then play with the settings in the inspector tab until you are satisfied with the look. And then check edge mask overlay. After that, hit shift plus spacebar again and search glow. Again, adjust the glow settings however you like. Next, add a transform node and decrease its size. Then find a frame where you want the animation to begin. I think frame 40 will be good. So put your play head at frame 40. Select transform node and add a keyframe to center values. Then go 20 frames forward and add another keyframe. Then go to the previous keyframe and drag the cursor out of the frame. Then move to the next keyframe and drag the cursor on anywhere on the card. I will make it more smaller. And if we play it back, we have this basic animation, but I think it starts too late. I want it to begin from frame 35. To do this, make sure your play head is on frame 35 or where you want the animation to begin. Then select the transform node and open the spline editor. Click here for zoom to fit. 
Drag select both keyframes and holding shift. Drag then to the playhead. Also smooth then out. So right click go to ease and select out cubic. Now if we play it back, it's looking much better now. Let's add one more node. We'll add it before the transform node. So hit shift plus spacebar and search for camera shake. Add it and change the settings like I do. This will add some moment to the cursor to make look more realistic. And with this done, let's create the mouse clicking animation. Go to the frame where you want it to begin. I think frame 55 would be good. Then select the transform node and add keyframe to the size. Move 10 frames forward and add another keyframe. Now, go to the frame that's in the middle of these two. It's 60 in my case. Add another keyframe and decrease the size a little bit. And if you play it back, it has this little click animation. And when the mouse clicks, we want our card to change color and then go back to normal. To do that, double click and open the group one. This is our first card. Then select the background node. Now memorize the frames where we added keyframes to the mouse click animation. In my case, these frames are 55, 60, and 65. Then go back to the background node and add keyframes to the color property on exactly those frames. Then on the middle keyframe, change the background color to any color you want. And if you play it back now, Boom! We have this amazing click animation. Now let's make it smooth. Open the spline editor and select all the keyframes and hit S on your keyboard to smooth them out. By the way, I forgot to smooth the mouse click animation, but I know you can do that on your own, right? And with that said, the animation is done. Congratulations! This is how it looks like. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button. And don't forget to get your free text animation pack at 500 subs. So, subscribe to the channel right now. Thanks for watching.